Hello there, and welcome to part six on obtaining uh, on, on a series I'm doing on how to obtain your ham license. Uh, those of you who have been following along uh, with the videos I've been posting already know that I do have uh, my uh, ham license, a general class. Uh, but in the very first video, I told everyone that <clears throat> I would cover many areas, uh, things that that you would either want to know about or, or might want to know about. And uh, we've covered a radio, and pretty soon we're going to be doing an antenna. But today I thought I'd have a little change of pace, maybe a little fun, uh, to show you something uh, that may you may or may not have seen. I don't know. Uh, part of becoming a ham radio operator today, uh, you take your license, and uh, you do not have to uh, take a, a Morse code test, uh, or CW, and uh, the old timers did, I mean, those, the old hams is what we call them, those fellas, that they, they had to bust their chops to get a ham radio license, it was like five or six different areas, or, or five or six different types of licenses, and I think the, uh, if I recall, I may be wrong about this, but after you got, in the old days, after you got your first license, which was a novice, I think it was, you had a year uh, to improve on your Morse code sending ability, and I think you had to take a second test a year later. So you, you had to pass five words a minute, I think it was, initially, and then later on they had to, you had to improve and take a second test. Uh, I think it was mandatory. And they had to go to these places where these these test proctors, you know, they would hand out the exams, and they were like old, hardcore school teachers from years ago, from what I understand. They used to wander up and, you know, roam up and down the aisles and kind of look at you, you know. And uh, some of the guys told me they sweated blood trying to get those tests uh, passed and get a license. Uh, but that, those, those days are gone, and uh, I'm kind of glad of it. However, however, even though we don't have to learn Morse code today, I think probably because of my age and the way I was brought up in my personal value system uh, I think that ham radio operators today owe a little something to the old timers uh, and I think one of those things is to try to at least learn how to do Morse code. Now, I'm not talking 20, 30, 40 words a minute you know if we can get 5 or 10 I think we've met an obligation, an unspoken obligation to the old hams so you know, how do you do this? Well, you know, you can buy a practice, uh, what they call a code key, uh, on the internet, on uh, eBay. Or you can make your own, which I happen to have done right here. Uh, I made two of them. Uh, my grandsons came down a couple of weeks ago. I finally was able to get them together, the two youngest. I handed them a sheet that had the Morse code on it, and I had a sheet, and I had built these in advance, and we sent secret messages back and forth. It was kind of fun. You know, they enjoyed it. I would send squirrely messages that would make them laugh, and they would say, we're going to get you with the next one, you know. So, in a way, it was helping both of us, you know. Uh, I learned a few letters. They learned a few letters. They now know what Morse code is or CW. So, it was it was enjoyable. Uh, so, let's get the camera off the, pie, the tripod and, and take a look at uh, what I have to show you today. This is uh, this white piece of paper is a schematic, and I got it off the ARRL website, uh, American Radio Relay League. I just printed it out, what they suggested, hook a battery to it, and I also had a little tiny speaker I bought at Radio Shack, but man, that thing sucked. It just forget those things. It just doesn't work. And uh, so what I did was I went out on the internet, on eBay, and I bought a pair of these. They're uh, four ohm speakers. I think I paid eight bucks for the pair, and. Uh, one of the antique radio form members who I showed this to uh, also recommended that these two capacitor values be changed, which would change the value of the sound, I mean the pitch of the sound coming out of the speaker. All it amounted to was you print out the circuit board, uh, fasten your components uh, with uh, screws, and attach a key, which I did. Now underneath here you'll see that there's a, uh, a piece of metal that the key hits on. It's that little dumaflachi right there. And uh, I don't know what that is. I found it in my parts drawer. I found a couple of them. I said, hey, that'll work. All I have to do is kind of bend the key a little bit to where it makes contact, and it should work. 
Oh, and I bought this knob at Lowe's. I bought one for each of these two keyers. So here's what one sounds like. Uh, this one here, and uh, not too bad, not too bad for a homemade little rig. Cost almost nothing to build. Uh, this thing here is called a Speed X. I bought it from an antique uh, Radio Forum member. Uh, went to Radio Shack, picked up a set of D-cell, I mean a D-cell uh, battery holder. Hooked up a couple of wires. Uh, this is what this looks like. It's just nothing really more than a buzzer. And uh, the w one wire goes on this screw and another one goes here, come up from underneath. And uh, you adjust it with this little screw right here. And uh, you don't have much adjustable room on it, unfortunately. You only have a, you know, less than an eighth of an inch, I guess, is what it was. And Anyway, this thing here, when you press this, the same situation, I have the same kind of a piece of metal under there that I found uh, in that parts drawer. And I have a little thing I made out of a piece of wire to hold it in place. No big deal, you know. This is what the, the Speed X sounds like. Not bad, not bad. A little high pitch, but if I, I can't adjust it much lower, I just don't have the range on that screw. Total cost for these things, oh, I don't know, maybe $14, $15 for the whole thing. And that includes the batteries and the Speed X and, and the knobs and uh, this. So about 15 bucks, I think, is what I paid for. So you can build a little homemade CW rig to teach yourself or have some fun with the grand would uh, have fun with the grandkids. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.